Um, we're now going to hear from Nick. Oh, where are you, Nick? Oh, there you are. Very nice to Nick Llewellyn, Access All Areas. Um, they made the film, and they helped a lot with making the film. Right, thanks, Dan. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm also joined by my colleague here. Uh, my name is Paul, and I'm a trustee of Access All Areas, and I'm also an artist. That's right. Brilliant. And Paul and I uh, worked together and made the film, uh, which there are some copies of on the table uh, just there, and you can pick them up. And we've got a lovely bag as well, Matt House bag, uh, which you can take uh, branding as you go out through the house. <laughs> um, so, Access All Areas, we're a, 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 a theatre company. We're based in East London. Uh, we make immersive theatre productions with artists with learning disabilities, and we have a whole range of uh, participation uh, programmes, uh, which we'll explain in a second. Uh, so, so, Paul, uh, where do we begin and, and what's our main objective? Well, as, as you said, um, Access All Areas opened in 1976 and, and we basically signed in and um, it was created by and four people who came to various um, people and we do shows, performances around the country and performance and professional wise and um, our aims and objectives are to change people's minds and perceptions and, to, and we also do our project as well. Great, so, so we're very much based in the community of Hackney, but alongside lots of community interventions and weekly projects, uh, we run um, uh, masterclasses, professional training in performance making with the disabled artists. I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, we are award winning. Um, there we go. Uh, we run a, a professional training course at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, which is a drama school in North London. Um, and uh, last year won the Guardian University Award for Student Diversity. Uh, Throw that in there um, for uh, for our uh, training program, um, and it's the only course really like it in, in, in the UK in the fact that we partner with a, a leading drama school, um, and we uh, give uh, an accredited program for people who wouldn't otherwise access professional training um, at that level uh, to become professional artists. And our artists have gone on uh, to, work, to make their own performances, um, also to star on television. We've got one of our um, actors on Holby City, if anyone has seen Jules Robertson mm -hmm. playing Jason in Holby City. Um, and so he's, he did our program last year and he's now uh, working professionally as a full-time actor, which is very exciting for us and him too. So, yes, yeah, so this is Kian. Um, has anybody seen the curious incident of the dog in the night time? Yes. Kian is the man behind that. Uh, he's taught every uh, lead actor how to be uh, play somebody with autism. Um, and he was uh, a part of a documentary on uh, BBC last year about his involvement. We worked with Kian to make his first one-man show uh, called The Misfit Analysis, which uh, we took to Edinburgh Festival last year and uh, it's now undergoing uh, a UK tour, so please come along and see that too, uh, a little plug there. Um, but Kian is one of our artists that really draws upon his um, own experiences and finds a creative outlet uh, to, to do that with. Um, and so his work is very satirical, um, it's very um, empowering, I think, for him, but also for people with autism to actually see uh, a really, you know, uh, an amazing role model of somebody who can really tell it how it is from his perspective and how he uh, and how he feels the world sees him too. And that's very much a, a big ethos of, of the work that we make at Swearies. So, no longer shut up. So, whilst we're doing all of that stuff, we're also open to working with other community uh, organisations uh, who can bring us in and, 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 and run bespoke creative projects, mainly looking at advocacy skills, speaking up skills, listening skills, assertiveness skills, that type of thing. We're also making training DVDs. And I was really humbled and honoured uh, to be approached by Jane Abrahams, who was the advocate who worked alongside Mabel for many, many years and uh, supported Mabel at many of the amazing Open University conferences. When Mabel passed away a couple of years ago, she left a, a small will. And as part of that will, she wanted to make a DVD uh, to make sure that young people understood her story um, and to really encapsulate uh, her experiences in the now 
and that it's very much not a legacy that sort of be, you know, it's forgotten and, and, and you know, we shed a tear and we say, well, thank goodness that's all over. Um, it's very much saying, well, actually, how can we keep learning from Mabel's story um, and how can we keep it alive, uh, referencing uh, what's happening day to day in people's lives at this very, this very moment. So, uh, Jane approached me um, to make this film and when I started to go through all of her medical notes, and Jane had all of her medical notes in two boxes, and lots of the DVDs, um, or VHS tapes, because uh, Jay, um, Mabel was a, a fantastic uh, speaker on many BBC documentaries. Um, I was just amazed that this, this legacy was literally living in James, under, underneath James' bed, basically, <laughs> in a box. Um, and was just totally amazed uh, uh, that, that that was there. And, that, and I felt so honoured to be asked to make this, to make this documentary um, about her life. Um, and, it's, and I'm going to explain in a moment how we've now, how Axel Lair has now taken this uh, to make a humongous project, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, but going back a couple of years ago, so Paul, we worked with you, Paul, yeah. um, on developing this film. And, and I worked really on it. Yeah. They asked by Nick and Jane what to play this part and what they did. Well, um, we did this. Um, Short performance last year um, about Michael Cooper's life and how she lived in the hospital for 30 years. And um, it also tells the story of, of me and how I, um, how I live as well and how things hasn't really changed from back then till now. Um, and, um, it also tells the story about me going on this journey um, on to find the origins of language and how we use language. Um, such words as read hard, which um, when I looked through Michael's medical notes, um, I found the exact same word read hard, which um, is used today. Yeah, yeah. So we worked with you Paul on developing the script. So the film, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I won't give it away too much, uh, but there's two parts to the, to the film. One is a contemporary story around Paul's character, Robin, who goes in search for language and where this word retard uh, has come from, because he's been called it by um, some, uh, some not very nice young people at the very beginning of the film. Um, but as he's uh, learning about uh, um, where that language has come from, it happens upon uh, Mabel's medical notes. And so we've used a modern story with archive material from many of Mabel's appearances on the, uh, on the television um, and uh, in various conferences as well. So, so from that film, um, we, going to move on to next, we are now developing our professional response to that. So we have five artists with learning, learning difficulties uh, who are creating their own institution which is the show is going to be called Madhouse Re-Exit. And uh, our catch, uh, catch line is five artists, five rooms, we're not going back. And each, each artist responded to these themes uh, in their own very bespoke way. We've got a performance poet, we've got a performance artist, we've got an actor, we've got a dancer, we've got a magician. And each artist responded to these themes in their own very unique way. And we're very, very excited to announce that we've been awarded a, a large society award by the Wellcome Trust uh, to develop this large-scale project, which I'll go on to the next slide, that's okay. Um, so in, in your pack, you'll see, you'll, you'll see these uh, flies, so you haven't got to remember everything, but I'll just go through it very, very quickly. Um, if anybody wants to, uh, to, to find out more about this, then please join our, join our mailing list uh, and look at our website. Uh, we've got a big show coming up um, next year. We're going to be going uh, to Cardiff and Manchester as well as London uh, with our response to this whole theme. Um, we're going to be having pop-up shows, so each of our artists is going to pop up on the street, in art galleries, uh, with our own very bespoke take on this, this theme. Um, we're going to be making a new book with Books Beyond Words, uh, which is going to be a non uh, pictorial uh, book for those people who are unable to read to access the project. There's going to be lots of talks and papers. There's going to be an exhibition at the museum uh, next year from February till May, so please come along to see that. And Paul, we're going to do a wiki. What's a wiki? Well, a, a, a wiki is um, it's basically like an online library, but it's 
a collective of of um, of historical stuff that um, that we use um, and that that um, a lot to, to, that means means stuff to us and basically we can learn and and take take something away from from using the wicked and then we can make the wicked much more bigger as the time goes on. Yeah, so the online resource will be feeding into the Living Archive which will be launching next year as well. Yeah, great. We've got one last picture. This is a pop-up version. This is what you'll be expecting if you come and see our show or come see any of our pop-ups. It's quite loud in your face. Key in, big overgrown baby here. This is he, how he sees, uh, how he's feeling institutionalised at the moment, feeling like a, an overgrown child even though he's now 26 years of age. Um, so this has already popped up at the Liberty Festival uh, in September and also at Rich Mix, and we'll, you will see this and many others of these uh, pop-up shows uh, over the next year. So hopefully you'll come and see our show and look out for us. You won't be able to miss us, I don't think. Um, but yeah, we're really honoured to be here, and I'm sure Mabel will be looking down very pleased that we've managed to yes. expand uh, such a huge project from a very early beginning. So thank you. Thanks, Nick. We're going to hear a bit later from um, Devon Perry, whose son is still in an institution. And um, it's not dead yet. This really matters. This stuff really does matter. And it's very too little. We're too silent about it, I think. Anyway, back to the program. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's just such a, a hugely important point. And actually, when we were talking about that and actually the relevance, the ongoing relevance of Mabel's story today. We went back to some of um, the team from Access All Areas and said, it'd be quite nice to hear your thoughts about the film, your reflections, and what does it mean for your life today? Um, and Paul, who spoke earlier, and Kian, um, made a short film, which are part of resources as well, um, explaining why they still think Mabel's story in this history has relevance for their lives today. We're just going to play a short clip uh, from that film now. Right, turn the Do you experience name calling like Robin in the film?
not just to entertain people and make people laugh. We are making a very serious point. We are showing people what happens as a result of people with learning difficulties being singled out from other people. We are we are showing, you know, the kind of pain that it causes. And we really do hope that I think it's important that teachers should see this. Um, the people in charge of the law should see it, and the government should see it, and it should make people wake up and open their eyes and realise that this kind of stuff cannot keep going on. We've got to put an end to it.